Hi. Uh, before we can move on uh, with our considerations of neoclassical model of trade, uh, we should learn one very useful tool used in the analysis, which is learner type. Okay, so as you remember, our assumption of constant return to the scale allows us to deal with one unit of production and then we can generalize our results for as many units as we want. Right? So, uh, if we can calculate something for one entrepreneur for one unit, later we can generalize it for the entire economy. And we will be relying on this generalization over here as well. Okay, and learner diagram uses ESO cost and uh, uh, ESO cost and uh, ESO plant for one unit, but in terms of value. Okay, how do we get? Uh, get uh, how do we start an analysis using learner diagram? Okay, so imagine that we have uh, uh, our cost function for producing one unit. Well, we know that in order to produce any units, we require uh, okay, R, K, M, right? Let's just say we are sticking to uh, manufacturing, plus R, L, M. Okay, so based on that, we can conclude that if we are not using any labor in the production process, then this is gone. Oh, of course, you should age. This part is gone, and here we get Km equal to 1 over R. So this is how much at most uh, 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 capital uh, we can afford. Okay. Then we've got that if Km on the other hand is equal to 0, we can easily deduce that Ln will be equal to 1 over W, so over which. Now we can easily put this on a graph. And here we have labor, here we have capital. Now this is the amount of capital we can have the most. And this is the amount of labor we can have the most. We also see from that that as air is getting smaller, we divide by a smaller number, this gets bigger. And the same goes over here. Of course, the, the two points are connected with a straight line because we know that this, uh, this is a linear function. Okay, that wasn't that bad. So we know what is the cost of producing one Unit. But now we need to introduce uh, oh maybe one more thing. Okay, uh, I hope this is really self-explanatory, but now we see that if R is going up, what is happening? Let's just say if R is going from so R0 that is lower than R1 to R1. So here we have R0. Where will we uh, how will the new the uh, unit value is, is a uh, cost to apply, well, we just need to draw it like this. Alright? Because now, as the price, uh, as the rent is becoming lower, we can afford, uh, and, and as the rent is getting, I'm sorry, higher, we can afford less. So we see that the pole, that, that this line is pivoting around uh, this point counterclockwise. Okay, now we will introduce one additional thing. What we're going to talk about now is called unit 
is the one for food. Why did I draw them like this? Well, I hope you can remember that we assumed that manufacturers are more capital intensive, while the food industry is more labor intensive. So, of course, those curves are leaning to the appropriate uh, axis. Okay, now, how will this work? What will happen over here for example, if price of manufacturers goes up from PM0 to some PM1. Look, now we will be dividing M, let's call it M0 now, by a bigger number. So, what should happen over here? This curve should move downwards because, of course, now we are dividing by a bigger number and consequently it is easier to obtain one unit value. So we see here that actually the bigger the price, the closer we will be going to the origin. Okay, now, knowing this, we are able to build the full learner diagram. I already want to apologize uh, in advance if I'm not going to be able to, to draw it correctly the first time. Because uh, when, you're not, when you're not using a computer, it's not such an easy task. Okay, so, what do we have? We start with uh, we start with uh, uh, we, we start with uh, manufacturers. Okay. okay, let's name this is M one over P M. And now we need 
to draw the one unit value is a point for sure. Okay, why those isopoint points are so important to us? Because look, if we have these two isopoint points, we can right away find equilibrium, so optimal values of production of both manufacturers and food. How do we do it? Well, we need to just find the isopost line that is line the lowest and still is tangent to both of uh, 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 to both of uh, isopoint So look, I think the one that does the trick should look more or less like this. Of course, we are imagining this is a perfectly straight line. So look, here we will have one over r, and here we will have one over w. So this point that you see over here will be, let's just say, is will give us optimal ratio of capital to labor uh, used in the production of uh, manufacturers. Then look, so if I draw a line, a straight line, away from this point to the origin, then we can say that the angle of this line is given by alpha m over 1 minus alpha m times W over it. Now, I can do exactly the same thing for the food production and here we can see that this angle is equal to alpha f over 1 minus alpha f W and over R. Okay, now, does this result that we see over here in the full learner diagram make sense? Well, I believe so. Why? First, let's notice one thing. W and R, so the ratio as well, is the same in both industries, right? We said there is a perfect competition and workers are perfectly uh, mobile between the two industries. So this implies that the same wage is paid to the workers in manufacturing and in food industry. And the same goes for capital. So the same rent is paid in the manufacturing industry and the food industry. So where does the difference come from? Well, as you remember, here we've got capital intensity parameter just as well as we've got one here. And what we've assumed? We've assumed that production of manufacturers is more capital intensive, while the production of food is more labor intensive. So, Holds. And if this holds, of course, the difference in optimal ratios are determined by the coefficient. And by uh, and of course now we see that this expression must be big. Okay. We will use learner diagram to show some finer points uh, associated the neoclassical model of trade, but in the next video we will move to some uh, propositions that we've discussed previously, but now we will do, the, uh, do them, start doing them in detail and deriving them from what we already put in the model. So, in the next video we are going to deal with uh, factor plot price equalization proposition.